tool in our victory chest is praying in the Spirit. Praying in your prayer language. The Holy Spirit will pray on your behalf, praying God's perfect will. For one who speaks in the tongue does not speak to man but to God. For no one understands but in his spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14.2 The Holy Spirit will pray for us in our weakness. Romans 8.26 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Joseph Price edifies us with these next following truths. He said, God does not need us to defeat the devil today. Jesus has already done it and given us authority and the victory. Our part is to enforce the victory by simply standing our ground, which is victory ground. In other words, you fight on the victory ground by standing. You don't fight for victory. Jesus has already done it and has given us the victory. Our victory tool can be also daily clothing ourselves with the spiritual armor. It's a must. We must be armed every day in the armor of God. From head to toe, we are covered, hidden in Christ, with the armor of God. We are girdled, girded with truth around our waist. We have the helmet of salvation upon our head. We have the breastplate of righteousness over our hearts. We have the shield of faith that extinguishes all the fiery darts. We have the shoes of peace, the good news. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we also pray for all the saints. Another tool, Lord, that we, the Lord has given us is um, his truth. And that enlightens us. It fills us. Where the enemy has come to steal our victory, the Lord Jesus will come against him with the lies and the fears. He breaks it down with the truth that he gives us. Where the enemy has caused us to be cautious, conscious of our failures and our weaknesses and the symptoms that try to invade our health, we combat it with the truth. We're not trying to be healed, but we already are healed in Christ. In his word, he says, by his stripes, we are healed. So think about this for a moment. You and I have received as children of God in our hearts the forgiveness of our sins. We've confessed that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of our lives. We're regenerated and converted from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And we're born again. We're a new creation. We're not the same person. We are a new creation in Christ. Inside of us, we are more than conquerors. We are already on victory ground. Everything that Jesus is, we are. Our spirits are one with him. The Holy Spirit enlightens us with the truth, with revelation. And as Jesus is, so are we. Our spirits are made new. And our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions are in need to be aligned to our spirit for the restoration, for the sanctification, for the healing and the wholeness. And in our spirits we are complete, but our souls are in the sanctification sanctification process. But Philippians 1 says, He will complete the good work that He has begun in us. He restores our soul for His name's sake. Are you seeing this in your hearts? With this revelation and the aligning of truth that flows from the inside out. Our spiritual walk flows from the victory that Jesus has given us in the victorious, abundant life we have in Christ. Will the weeds keep coming back? Yes, but we need to attend to them. Another spiritual tool we have is the empowering favor of the grace of God, who gives us the strength to endure and gives us the power in our weakness. The Holy
Holy Spirit is the power in us, for greater is he that is in you than the one in this world. He gives us the power to move one step at a time, strength upon strength. He gives us the strength to persevere. The Lord helps us not, uh, he encourages us not to despise the little things of advancement. Be encouraged in the small things. When uh, I was almost done the yard, the sun was really, really in the middle of the day and it was very strong and I was getting tired and it was very hot. And I only had like a little bit left to do and of course the thought came, well, I could just leave it. But then, you know, I want to walk in the spirit of excellence, but not performance. Um, but I didn't want to leave it unfinished. And, you know, I thought about the weeds and the roots. And I thought, okay, there's another spiritual analogy here that the last step can sometimes be the hardest. In the natural as well as the spiritual. Perseverance and diligence. Pressing forward to finish our, our walk of faith in the spirit to complete the task in the natural. And, and we need to do that to be diligent in our spiritual walk as well. A hindrance of this pressing forward of completion could be distractions, um, busyness, and one also of laziness. Laziness in the natural and in the spiritual bring nothing. You get what you put into. We reap what we sow. Nothing benefits us from laziness. Proverbs 13, verse 4 says, The soul of the sluggard craves, but nothing, he gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Instead, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward in your serving the Lord Jesus. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. There's so many more things of our victory chest that we have that the Lord's given us for all things. Uh, we can talk over and more and more about it. Um, but I think this was a good start to get um, motivation towards uh, uh, encouraging you uh, to take a look at your spiritual walk. See the tools that have been given you to help you maintain and keep your spiritual walk flowing with the Lord. You have the arsenal of tools given to you in the Jesus, in the victory chest of Jesus that he's, he supplies all your needs. You have the key to open it at any time you want. The last analogy I'd like to leave with you after the yard was completed, um, I took it, it just took a fresh look at it and it was inviting. The fragrance of the trees and the grass was also inviting. Spiritually, we are also in Christ a fragrance. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 and 16 says, But thank be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and the manifests through us the spirit, of, the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Oh, I have one more last funny analogy, and I think you'll kind of laugh about this one. My husband purchased this fly zapper, and it's with, for the pesky flies that invade our home. And it's, it zaps the flies. It looks like a tennis racket. Um, the house was, uh, door was open, and flies came in invading our house. So I went to work. There, I took the fly zapper and started <laughs> zapping flies. And this is funny. I, 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 it's just true. I declare that these flies are mine in the name of Jesus, and I, I have victory. And so I started zapping. I, I think I killed like seven of them in a row. And, and so then the spiritual analogy here came, and um, I started to laugh. I know it's probably not very nice, but I started to laugh. And I thought about Jesus laughing at our enemy. And, you know, it's, it, <laughs> this enemy is a defeated foe. You know, and some may be saying, you know, these are flies. I, and, but, you know, I had heard this and I looked it up and sure enough, it's there. 
it's called um, a Hebrew word called Bezalbabub. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, Bezalbabub. It refers to, as another name, is the devil. Belzalbabub as a flying, uh, a demonic fly, who is also known as the Lord of the Flies. Um, so here's the spiritual analogy that I, I just kind of, that's why I like this is what I like, because I know that we are victorious in Christ. Revelation 20.10 says, Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown in the lake of fire, burning, joining with the beast and the false prophet. And there they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Psalms 21, 8 to 13 says, You will capture all the enemies, Lord. Your strong right hand will seize them who hate you. You will throw them into the flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them with his anger and fire will devour them. He will wipe out their children from the face of the earth and they will never have descendants. Although they plot against us with their evil schemes, they will never succeed. For they will turn and run when they see your arrows aiming at them. Lord, rise up with all your power, for we will sing and celebrate of your mighty acts. So let's not focus on that so much of the enemy. But let's put, because um, we know that the enemy's, his end is near. His time is short. We know that. But Jesus tells us in the word, in Luke 10, 20, he says, However, do not rejoice in the spirits submit to you when they submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Revelation 3, 5 says, All those who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce them before my Father and his angels that they are mine. The Lamb's Book of Life are the names of all those who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Romans 10.9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And whoever acknowledges me before others, the Lord says, I also will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. Matthew 10.32 Hebrews 13, 21 says, We are equipped with every good for doing his will, everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through his Son, Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God, and may the Lord answer all your prayers. Psalms 20, verse 5. Let's pray. Father God, Lord God, you are the Lord of victory. You are the God that gives victory and honor, and it's all yours, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Almighty, the Holy One. And Lord, you have ordained all our steps, and you make our ways straight. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to continue to teach us and show us the way in which we are to go. May we glorify you, Lord, in all that we do. Father, I ask you to bless each one listening now and whoever hears in the future message, this message, that you would enlighten each one's heart with all spiritual wisdom so that each one will know what the hope is of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. And what is the surpassing greatness of your great power towards us who believe? Lord Jesus, we thank you and we love you. And your grace is enough for us, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, who guides us into all truth and has given us victory. Our victory is in you, Lord. We praise you, our King and our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Under Grace Ministries. And I pray that you were touched by the Holy Spirit of this truth and growing to know who you are in Christ with all the rich blessings that flow to you for his glory. May the Holy Spirit fill your heart with boldness and courage, with strength and power to trust and to serve the Lord. May you be filled with him, enjoy him, grow to rest in him, 